Hi friends, it's Emily here and you're watching Bullet Journal Engineer. Today we're going to do our main theme, which is going to be a cute white black yellow tone. I will show you step by step how to draw a detailed B only using a micron pen and so much more. Well, let's get started. This is our April theme. If you want to see step by step how I made it, check out the links in the description. Before we start our May team, I want to show you a surprise that I received this morning in my mail. Shy Fury was so kind to send me a collection of her stickers and they're amazing. Just see the colors guys. Some of them are so wonderful that I'm just ready to make a special theme just to fit them in my journal. For example these two. Imagine a cozy home theme for the rice sticker and a blue greenish theme for the girl on the left and maybe and maybe her accessories as part of the theme as well. If you want to see more of Shy Fury's art, I will link her Etsy shop in the description so you can check it out there. For now, I'm gonna leave the stickers aside as I'm gonna think about related themes as I promised you. Let's go to our May. I'll use watercolors from Winsor and Newton and in particular the yellow colors. I will use separate, how it's called, palette thing? Never mind. I will use a separate one because I have already set out the grease in here and I don't want to spoil them. I will also use a black sheet A4. It has no specifics, just something that I can tear and glue as a collage. We arrange the paints and prepare the water and start the basic outline of the cover. Here I will cover the whole field yellow and style it in the shape of a honeycomb. This little field here as well. Above it we're gonna have a detailed black and white bead that at that point I still had no idea how to look like so I'm just gonna figure it out in the process. I start by mixing the yellow, unlike the previous videos where usually I used a lot of shades of green or blue or any other color, here I need only one shade of yellow. For this I have prepared only one cleaning cup and not to as usual. Even if the water turns yellow, it will not affect my painting because anyway, I'm painting only with yellow. I tried to add a lot of water at the palette here to have a larger amount of paint and I start painting. At first I didn't know how big I wanted the saturated yellow part to be or not the speckles around. So I kept expanding it with mixing paints. You can see little by little how the water in my cup turns yellow by the way, but I use exactly this effect when I need a very light nuance at the end of the yellow spot. Another important thing is to always have a paper tower to absorb unnecessary water as I do right now. In addition to absorbing water, also you can use your paper tower to absorb paint and thus to lighten areas that are not yet dried. If you're working with a paper that is specially for watercolors, then actually it is good to paint the whole yellow field at once so you can get more homogeneous, homogen, ho, homogeneous transition, <laughs> but in my Dingbas journal uh, this is not actually a watercolor paper, even its characteristics are 100 USM, which is a lot for a journal, but it's not watercolor paper at the end. And because it's not watercolor paper, I have to work with significantly less water to avoid tearing the paper or waving it. Despite the fact that I applied the paint carefully because I wanted to avoid any paper torn, I finally helped myself with a hair dryer as the paint could dry faster be before it is absorbed through the sheet itself. So yeah, budget tip! If you are making a theme and you're worried that you may damage your notebook paper, always have a hair dryer prepared near you. After the hair dryer and a little aimless staring at the notebook, I decided that I want to expand the yellow spot even more. I will add darker pigment and I start to spray it. When the page is completely dry, you notice some dark details here and there, which to be honest are not sign of a well-made watercolor. When painting with watercolors, you should strive for a smooth transition of the colors and not for strange dark spots like those here. This is because of the uneven application of the yellow I did and the little water I used, but I don't care that much this time because the whole yellow field will be covered by other details that will divert attention from this, let's say, um, defect. I start painting hexagons. 
For reference, I use only the dots on the page for this template. Each hexagon is two squares wide and each vertical wall is a square and a half high. After making the two vertical lines, I connect in a common vertex which is a half square distance. I admit it may sound confusing, so take a good look at the diagram in the right corner. To get a gradient effect, I use three colors of pens, dark brown, light brown and yellow. Well, to be honest, the two browns are very similar here, so you can take them as one color. I use the soft tip of the markers I use to make the beehives look a little more free handy, maybe? But it's not a problem for you to make them with a marker with a hard tip. As you see, right now I don't even use a line and some of the hexagons are actually quite curved and, and may even don't look like hexagons. Regarding them, the hexagons, I try to make the brown ones to cover mainly the saturated yellow part and the yellow hexagons to cover the pale yellow parts and even to come out of them. This way we create a scattering effect. To say it with more simple words, try your painting to not look like one big banana. Another important thing is to slightly change the shape of the layers. If we imagine that watercolor is one layer and the hexagons are the second layer above, we must try to change the shape of the two layers a bit. You can see here how the brown hexagons do not reach the end of the saturated yellow part and here and here the yellow hexagons come out of the pale yellow outlines. Of course we are talking about small changes and not to avoid overlapping at all. Now we must write the name of the month, of course, to not forget which month we are doing right now. I take a white sheet and write May on it. Then I outline it with black pen Micron 01 and with scissors I cut another outline, leaving a small white edging around May. I really like this technique, by the way, because even if you mistake something in the word, you misspell it or no, you miswrite it, you don't spell it, you can always cut a new one, literally. And with this white edging, it is quite spectacular, I may say. We also make a similar monthly calendar, where I make the days of the week in yellow and outline them again with a black micron, I think here 005. Then I enter the days themselves, I cut the calendar and do some finishing touches. I have a new liquid glue for the paper that I bought just yesterday from the art store and everyone just priced me that it was very good and glue it quickly without wrinkling the paper. As I mentioned, it's a liquid glue. Well, it wasn't liquid at all. I admit, my try to get something out of this applicator felt more like torture or fitness exercise. In the end, I managed to squeeze as much I needed for May, thanks God. And yet I was so confused about how the glue should work because it was not liquid at all. At the end I just smeared it with my finger on May. And actually somehow it worked. And then I tried to get another glue out to glue the calendar. But oh my god, maybe it was a good idea to try that glue before I shot that video and not to open it real time. But at least now you can see my honest reaction and my real struggles. I decided it was time to stop my fitness exercise for today and go back to my old dry glue. This is the best glue by the way that I've ever had. My only problem with it is that it turns out very quickly and every time it turns out I cannot just change the row inside but I have to throw away all this plastic and I need to buy a whole new one which is ridiculous. I'm looking for alternatives that are more eco-friendly and obviously this new liquid glue is not one of them. Well, after all these struggles, we finished our yellow part of the cover and now we're gonna move on the more difficult part, namely drawing the bee. I start of course with the most basic outlines of the bee. If you see a bee, you notice the three main body parts. You can may even see four by the way, maybe it depends on the bee. I stylize them with circles and I slightly overlap them with each other. Don't worry if it takes you a few times to do them right, I also erased a lot of times as you can see right now. I want my bee to be big and fluffy 
much like a bumblebee and I mark where the wings and legs will be to get an idea of what the bee will look like when placed on the page. Since I didn't plan at all what I wanted this bee to look like, now we will see the real process of thinking and drawing. Now that I have a basic shape of the three circles, I outline them so I can get a better shape of the body of the bee. I also add a small cute antennas. Looking to the bee bodies now, by the way, it looks like a peanut. Because somehow I painted the bee strange, right now it looks quite hunched over and because of that I changed the position of the little bird more upright as it is in the middle of flight. And maybe the wings are the hardest part but don't worry about it, I'm gonna help myself with a drawing from Pinterest which I will link in the description as well. It shows in detail the main elements of the wings. As you can see, one wing has two separate segments that are good to distinguish from the beginning. Another interesting detail that I think is very important is to draw the upper part straight and only at the end to turn as here. Do not paint the wings round because they're not round. Once we have the wings, we start adding other details like eyes and black stripes. While I'm painting from time to time, I just stop and stare at the picture for a few minutes to find out if I don't like something or if I miss something. And we are so concentrated in the drawing that, that we miss so many details. So sometimes it's good just to stop and stare. Well, as I stop and stare, this time I didn't like something and this is my head. Uh, the bee's head, not mine. Since my goal is to make the bee fluffy and sweet and not one of those scary wasps, I want to enlarge my head a bit and bring it closer to the body. I admit that the process of making the head perfect is long and tedious and at times I think, Emilia, you idiot, you had to leave the first version of the head. But it's part of the art, you know, you need to struggle a bit sometimes. Finally, after 20 minutes, I have a head and I have a bead that I like. I deal with the legs, which are six in number, by the way, you know. To be honest, at first the legs look like a little sinister and that's why I decided to do not all six legs but only three of them to look like a cute little bee and not like a monster with 50 legs under it. Creepy, don't you think? Hmm? By the way, a quick reminder right here, if you like this video so far, don't forget to give it a like or even subscribe to the channel. I upload twice a month so I'm not gonna spam your homepage that much. <laughs> Once we have sketched all the details with a pencil, it's time for Doomsday. Let's start with the fine writer or our Micron Pen. I use Micron Pen 005 as it's rather thinner than the other ones on the market. I'm trying to outline the body not just with one line, but to make a lot of tiny hairs. Like I said, I want the bee to be fluffy. I'm gonna name it Bob, the bee Bob. Now I come to the slightly more annoying part, to make each hair separately. Believe me, it's not that difficult as it seems. With slightly moving of your wrist, you can make small lines that are directed in one direction. And the good thing about this is that even if you make mistake, you can always add more hairs and hide that mistake. And since the hairs are many, I will leave you to briefly observe how I superimpose them. To be honest, at some point I got a little tired and I would temporarily switch to bob swings. I start to draw them and I try to make all the lines without interruption. Regarding the inner lines, I help myself again with the same image from Pinterest. Well, of course I change it a bit in the process because you cannot make the same art, like literally the same. For now, I will just make random lines and I will add some light shadows later. To be honest, the ends of the wings turn out a little strange, 
a bit like a spider web, but I'll pretend that I don't see it right now. After the wings, I return to the painting of the Bob's hairs. Usually bees have only one or two yellow stripes on their back. And since we're painting the bee in enlarged version, we also need to make only two large yellow stripes. Well, in our case, they're gonna be white because we're not gonna cover the bee, but yes, we need to make only two stripes. Don't be tempted to do more than two. This is a bee and not a zebra. I put the black hairs around the wings because the bees are always black there. Although I already started painting with the micron, I still don't like the bee's head and I continue experimenting with it. To give Bob a sweet look, I want to make his eyes big, like big kawaii eyes. Which means I need a big head too, like this one, with two antennas. By the way, last year for May, I also had a bee theme quite similar to this one. You can see it in the corner right now. I just love the color palette too much and... I wanted to recreate it again, but I didn't want to repeat the same thing, so I reduced the yellow and painted Bob the Bee in different position. If you want to see a time lapse of how I made the last year's bee or flip through of my last my, look at the links in the description. <laughs> now back to the bee. Because with Micron 005 it is very difficult to cover the very black part of a giant bee, the places where they should be pure black I also do with Micron 01 or 02. In this way I save a lot of work and I can point the focus on some details as if they're more saturated. Since I don't intend to cover the bee with other colors, I want to just leave black and white, I must be really careful not to merge hairs with the eye. To differentiate them from each other, I do two main things. First is to draw the hairs so that they radiate from the eye. And the second one is that I draw the hair so that they can start a little after the eye so that a white border is created. Finally, I color the eyes black. Who doesn't love big black eyes? Of course, another thing that I do is to add hair everywhere. The last ones are the legs, but they're also kinda easy. I'm not sure how to explain actually the shapes that I'm drawing right now, so I can just follow what I'm showing you on the video. Since the wings are a bit pale compared to the blackness of the body of the bee, uh, with Micron 01 I repeat the main lines and I add small light shadows on the underside as if the wings are illuminated from above. And actually I'm almost done with the bee. And since I love geometric shapes, I will surround it with a round dotted line and I will add a few more hexagonal details. You must be wondering why I didn't use these patterns when I draw the hexagons of the honeycomb. Well, because it's much easier for me to keep track on the dots on the sheet uh, than is to keep track on the templates because you need to connect their walls and stuff. Well, this differs from person to person, so if you're more comfortable with the template, just go on. It's time to move to the monthly press, but before that I want to show you the back where we drew the watercolors. So you can see that there are no leaks and no ghosting from the watercolor. By the way, these pages are not supposed to be blank, but I left them to write down some memories that happened to me in April. So I'm gonna fill them later in the future. Now let's go back to the monthly spreads. This time I will not make my favorite daily stuff tracker, surprise, surprise because I will travel and I will not need it that much. This is an important piece of advice for all beginners to choose the most suitable trackers for each month depending on what you're going to do. If you forcibly use the same trackers every time, you are very likely to lose motivation in filling them out. This time I will have a month of a glance field with 31 lines for each day. In principle, I rarely use this type of fields because my daily routine consists of two types of days. The first one is the days that I don't have any important tasks and the second type are the other days that I have only important tasks. There is no middle ground. So, so many things are happening to me in just one day, it's, it's rather hard to 
just feel it in one line but anyway i'm gonna try this time the last time i made such a few i think it was three or four years ago so we'll see how much i've changed for my convenience i mark the weekends in yellow so i will know which date corresponds to which date or day date anyway and here the black paper comes into play i love the combination between those two colors yellow and black oh my god creates the sense of depth of the picture and contrasts with the white paper of the notebook in fact it will be interesting in the future if i take notebook with black sheets sometimes whether i will put the white scraps for college are they gonna have the same vibe as this one here i don't know i'm gonna see maybe in the future stay tuned <laughs> To add more contrast in black and white, I also make a beehive in the upper left corner. Of course, I add the field for notes and for goals. Then we go to the right, we're gonna make a happiness log. It's kind of a gratitude look, but for happy things that have happened to me every day. It's not gonna be for something like, oh, I'm grateful that I woke up. It's gonna be more like, oh, today uh, I saw a butterfly. I don't know if I'm explaining it right, but they're kind of different. So I'm gonna do a happiness look. I'm doing this because recently I realized how much I focus on negative things and good things happen all the time and I have to learn, no, I have to remember how to pay attention to good and happy things in my life. My father always told me that good people remember good things. In fact, this might be my quote for the bottom of the page right now, but anyway, I didn't thought of this in time. Well, that's why I'm writing it here. Good people remember good things. If there is one thing you need to remember from this video, this is it. Yo and black are one of my favorite team palette so make sure to check out the next video where we are gonna do our weekly spreads which are gonna be really interesting and different from the ones we did the last time you can find the link in the description below if you have any questions or something i'm gonna answer them down below in the comments and yep yeah, if you like this video so far give it a like and thank you for staying till then guys see you in the next video and until then don't forget to stay on the sunny side